by the way, she joined. Hey, hey she's, what's up, awesome. girl? What's up? <laughs> you're in the house. We got. I had some watermelon today. So. I knew it. I knew you were gonna have like <laughs> fruit pop. So I, I had to bring the king out. You know, I had to. Oh, oh yeah, I had it ready. Mm. I don't have any. Oh. Um, but you had two durians today? Is that what I heard? Did I hear right? Yeah, I got two durians today. Oh, I, like I have two right here, but I have two to eat as well. And then two oh. pineapples. What's up? Yeah. Oh, I see some cool people in here. The fruit hunter. We got Ina, my boo. Oh my God, we got some cool people. Watermelon workout. Listen, Grant, what do you know about that watermelon workout? What do you know about that, Grant? That's Grant, right? Raw Aussie athlete? Yeah. That's, that's Raw right. Grant. Yeah, Grant Raw Aussie athlete. Woo! Okay. <laughs> so I was just asking people what fruit did they eat and whatnot. Um, but now that you're back in, how was your day? How, what, were you, what were you up to today? My day was great. Thank you for asking. Uh, I'm actually <laughs> filming a watermelon workout challenge. So Grant oh, wow. is psychic. Um, so I did that. <laughs> And I did some editing, and it's a beautiful sunny day here in Miami. How about you, Frank? I just got back home um, like 20 minutes ago. I was out working and doing the house flipping stuff and driving a bunch of places everywhere. I picked up some durian shortly before I got here. I had to get the fruit prop, you know, to <laughs> go along with the net. So. <laughs> the best props are the ones you can eat, you know what I mean? These are the best. The best props, the ones you can eat. Oh. Definitely, yeah. You can't do a workout with durian, though. It's too spiky. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> so, really excited. Really excited. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, we could can start off by talking a little bit about, like, our journeys, personally. Um, and we can just, like, you know, figure we can go a little bit back and forth and then open up and, or, you know, and then go into, like, why perhaps it's important to focus on money. Because, you know, that's one thing that I find missing uh in the fruitarian community in the health conscious community that we're not really uh driven towards financial abundance the word abundance is so recognized but only when it comes to love and and fruits and trees but when we think of money and finances everyone at woodstock's like nah like no i, I evil I that stuff's it. evil right yeah right, right. so i'm like you know so we gotta we gotta connect those two you know i feel like uh, fruitarians especially, people who are health conscious especially, need to have that uh, that connection with, with a financial abundance. Because like how powerful is that for somebody to be so health conscious and to have the money to back up all those awesome ideas? Mm -hmm. Yes, I love this topic. Thank you so much, Frank, for having me on. I love this. And uh, I'm really excited to hear more about your story as well, learn from you. And um, yeah, I totally agree with everything you just said. I think if we don't have an abundance of money, we can't change the world. We know this is a, the world is run by money. We know this, right? And so we need to have influence on the society and the people with the money have the most influence. So we want to, money to be in good hands. Uh, we don't wanna, we don't wanna shy away from that. Money's not evil. It's what you do with money that can be evil. And um, yeah. I'm really, I really agree with everything you just said. Facts, facts. Yeah, yeah, money is such a tool, you know, and <clears throat> like for someone who's health conscious, we could, we could turn that money into, let's say like a juice bar, a, a yoga workshop, you know, um, a fruitarian community, like, like with these dollars, we can literally, you know, co-create uh, our new, our, you know, the, the world that we want to see, obviously. So, um, I'm curious how you got started in your fruit distributing business, how that came along. Cause like, I'm, I'm personally very curious. Yeah. Just because it seems really great. You've got a, a, just an abundance of access of fruits. It seems like. Okay. Well, uh, so let's start from the beginning. I went raw vegan, um, 10 years ago, 10 years ago this year. Whoa. And in, yes, years. 2011. Wow. And um, in the beginning, I wasn't really into fruit. I was eating a lot of nuts and a lot of raw vegan gourmet. And I was still, I was not feeling so good. I had really bad skin and it wasn't getting better. And long story short is when I started focusing on the fruit, getting more fruit in, um, I felt way better, more energy. I lost weight. And um, 
I really got inspired because fruit is not only the healthiest food on earth, but it's the best tasting food. So mm. it's like, wow, win win. And I never mm. have to crave anything again because I'm eating sweet things all the time, right? And we have a sweet tooth because we're supposed to be eating sweet things. A lot of people are trying to like deny their sweet tooth, but the issue is not the sweet tooth. The issue is the processed sugar. That is poison and fruit is the fuel that your body needs. Um, so, hey, Keisha, oh my God, these are really, I love everyone that's in here. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, so let's start about the fruit business. So, okay, before I went raw vegan, I was in the music business. I went to school for audio engineering and I was working at Sony and I had a great job there. And then I was working at, also working at a recording studio, which is one of the best in the world. And I met like all these people, Paul McCartney, Lady Gaga, all these yes. crazy, you know, people filmed there and I didn't care anymore. Once I went raw vegan, I was like, whoa, this is li literally my passion. Like I need to inspire people and teach people like how to eat because I thought I was healthy eating chicken and fish and, you know, eating rice cakes. I thought that was a healthy thing. Whole wheat wraps. So I didn't care about music anymore. And I got a job at my... Um, like a local health food store. It was New York's only vegetarian health food store. Yeah. I quit my really good job and I got a job for $9 an hour working at a health food store. And I didn't even care about money because I just wanted to learn. I just, right. I knew that if I followed my passion, things will open up for me. They always do, right? I have a, right. I have a belief that the universe has my back. And I think you have the same belief, right? Yeah, no matter what. So I worked there and I just started learning a lot and being around people that were, you know, into this weird health stuff. And mm. then um, I got a job at a raw vegan place. Okay. So in New York City, I got a job raw there. raw vegan place. Yeah. So it was like, everything was raw vegan, juices, smoothies, uh, oh. grab -go. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And I worked there for seven years. And then I, we, I went to another raw vegan place. And then I moved from New York last year to Miami. And what happened was I moved here and I said to myself, I'm going to open my own. I'm going to have my very own juice bar. And then a week later. This is after working at a juice bar for several years. For yeah, summer, for almost, summer. yeah eight years. For almost and, eight and, years. Yeah. So you've learned kind of the whole business of how a juice business runs, you know, from, you know, I mean, you, you could, after working in it for eight years, you pretty much could run one yourself. Absolutely. I mean, I, within three months of working there, I was promoted to assistant manager. And then within a month, I was promoted to manager and then district manager, then operations. And um, I know the grab and go food industry inside and out. And I said to myself, I'm going to move to Miami and I'm going to open my own. And what happened was a week after that, Corona hit a week after I moved here and everything shut down. And I was like, Oof. what the fuck am I gonna do? I didn't know what to do. Cause that's my, that's all I knew. And a lot of us get stuck in what we just have been doing, what we know, right? We're like, that's all I can do. That's the only experience I have. And I said to myself, okay, wait a minute. Just because I did this for the last, you know, eight years, doesn't mean I have to do this for the next. And I said, okay, what do I really want to do? Because, you know, the quarantine time was a time for us to either get better or get worse, for us to either advance or just become depressed. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to start a fruit business because that's mm. my number one passion. Mm. And what happened was I didn't know where to start. So I just asked, honestly, this is crazy, but I just asked the universe, could you help me? Like, I don't pray, but I, I talk to the universe. You know, I talk to nature, I go to the beach and I just talk to the clouds. And I'm like, in my head, I'm just like, maybe can you send me somebody to help me? Cause I don't know how to do this on my own. And the next day, somebody messaged me on Instagram and he said, hey, I would love to meet with you to talk about business. Mm, like a juice business. Look at that. Yeah, he said juice business, I think. And wow. I met him and then we spoke and I was like, well, what do you think about a fruit business? He was like, down, I'm down. If you're the face of the company, I'll do it. And so- <clears throat> If you're the face of the company. Yeah, if I'm the face of the company, nice. we would invest. Because so he's he seen that you were perhaps genuinely, you know, moved, you know, or passionate towards the fruit and that yeah. kind of lifestyle, yeah. So what happened was 
that I went into business with this person. Like I met him and I went to business the day that I met him, right? Side note, not the best idea, okay? To go into business with somebody you don't know. But I went into business with this person and he was an investor, he had lots of money and I was just the, I was the passion and the face of the company and the right. customer service and everything. I was everything mm -hmm. except the money. And what happened was it didn't work out. Okay, it didn't work out. My first real business, it didn't work out. I had to leave that, I had to separate from the business partner. Then I got really depressed because I, I had my own business for once and I was on cloud nine and I was so excited and we weren't really making a lot of money, but I was going somewhere, you know, like I was doing something on my own for the first time and um, it felt really good. And then when it ended, I got really depressed and I went like a month and a half, I think, without having a business. And then I met someone else randomly and she was like, hey, listen, I know you had that fruit business. Um, do you want to do that with me? Like, I'd love to partner with you and do that. She loves fruit. Um, you know, she's passionate as well. And I was like, you know what? Yes, I'll partner with you because I really want to do this. And I didn't believe I could do it on my own. I really didn't, Frank. Like, people see me. I don't know why, but I have a few followers that, that message me. And they're like, Jeanette, I wish I could have your confidence. I wish I could not give a shit what anybody thinks. And it's not true. I really give a shit. I really don't have great confidence. And I just pretend that I do because, you know, like... Fake it till you make it. And yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say that. Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. Works. Because that's yeah. what I learned. You gotta do uh -huh. that. So, I went into business for the second time with this person that also I didn't really know. She was a friend of a friend, and we were we started getting pretty successful. We started getting lots of local clients. And, and um, this second business was the fruit distributing business. Yep, still doing the same thing pretty much. And you're you're still on on that same fruit distributing business. Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is the second partner and well, uh, but what was that driving force from where you why why did you how did you go from eight years working at a at a juice bar to then all of a sudden wanting to start your own business what what was that shift in your mind that made you say you know like i'm changing things now great question uh i i saw a youtube video and it said it was like giving advice from a billionaire. And he said, you'll never make your dreams come true working for someone else. And mm. I was like, wow, that's so true because I loved my job. That, that's the thing. In New York, I loved it. My last job was the head of training and development at a raw vegan food and beverage industry, like a raw vegan food and beverage company. And I loved it so much. And I, I left because I was like, wait a minute. That's not really my dream, right? My dream is not to work for someone else for the rest of my life and, and be told what to do and what not to do and don't use the word vegan, only use the word plant-based when you're training and you know little things like that. And so really watching inspirational YouTube videos helped me understand that I'm never gonna make my dreams or make as much money as I'm supposed to make working for someone else, ever. Um, so back to the um, second business partner, I just want to tell, show you guys this story because things are like this. When you go into business for yourself, it's not going to be like this, okay? Frank, Frank probably knows. It's like this, okay? So what happened with the second business partner is we were doing great. We were doing amazing, and she was, like, um, more – she was doing things that I wasn't good at, and I was doing the videos and customer service, things that she didn't want to do, right? So it worked out really good. And she had a car. I don't drive. Right. I don't drive yet because I'm from New York and I don't have a driver's license yet. We don't need that there. So yeah. she would get the fruit. She would drive to the farms. I would be home talking to customers, be online, getting more, more orders. And it worked out perfect um, in the beginning. And then towards the end, I realized it wasn't a good. It, again, I had the wrong business partner. Right. So for the yeah. second time, the second time now, I no longer have a business partner and i just recently started it on my own and i realized that i can do this i can do this mm. on my own i uh, you don't need a business partner you don't need an investor what you need here's what you need you need one customer you need one customer to be in business that's all you need you don't even need an llc you don't need a million followers you don't need confidence you don't need experience you need one customer you're in business. 
Yep. And that one customer, that one little profit that you make is even if it's four or five, six dollars, the littlest amount, it feels the best. Yeah. Right? Because it's, because it's, first of all, it's all yours. That's number one. Number two, it's, you did that. You, you made right. something from nothing. And it's, it's the fruits of your labor. It's, yeah. it's completely. <laughs> the fruits of your labor. Yeah. Yes. Is that a cup? What? I have a. <laughs> Frank, I have so many watermelon things. It's ridiculous. Thank you, <laughs> by the way, to everyone who has sent me watermelon things. People send me stuff all the time. It's unbelievable. So <laughs> thank you, universe. Uh, somebody sent me that. So oh, okay. that's my story, Frank. And uh, yeah, it has not been easy. It's been a, it, it's been a crazy roller coaster this last <clears> year <throat> of having a partner, not having a partner, having a partner, it not working out again. And the depression between, you know, partners and just not knowing what I was going to do, just feeling like a victim. It was really hard. And then mm. just recently I realized I can do this. There's no problems or solutions. Yeah. I just got to be resourceful. Maybe, like so, maybe it just took you a little bit longer, but you know, when you, when you kind of just come to that conclusion, you're like, after working, <sighs> after working several years in any business, you've pretty much made that company thousands, <sighs> tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars where it's like, like once I started working for my dad for about a year flipping houses, I'm like, I learned these skills now. I know how to do the foundation work, uh, the framing, the electrical, the plumbing, the roofing work. And it's like, hey, like when I see people call my dad uh, and ask them for like, you know, quotes on a project and I can. And then when he says he's going to get these you know new jobs and he sends me to do it, it's like, well, couldn't I have just, you know, got the deal with the client myself? And it's like, and then this light bulb goes off, you know, and kind of like you had that light bulb go off. It's like, wait, I can do this on my own. Like, I remember I took about um, my, my first way, the, the first job that I took, well, I guess my first gateway out of my job was installing carpets. I was just going to ask your story. I really want to know your story. Yeah. So I guess it would like ease into it. So I was working with my dad uh, in flipping houses strictly right after high school. Like day one after high school, I started flipping houses with my dad and learned the entire, you know, all the skills needed. For I did that for about a full year. I didn't get paid much, but I knew I was getting paid in experience. And then came the time where I decided, you know what, um, I was just kind of getting aggravated, you know, because the, the, the minimum pay and I'm like, I'm going to go work for somebody else. I went to work with somebody else doing carpet installments and only carpet installments for about two weeks. And within those two weeks, I entered with the intention, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to work with, for this guy installing carpets and I'm going to learn the skill because I know that my uncle has big properties that if, that he hires, you know, uh, carpet contractors to install carpets at his property. So if I were to learn the carpet skill, he could just contract me and I would get the contract and all the profits would go towards me. So after I learned the carpet. So you're 18 years old thinking this? I was nine. I was 18, 19. Yeah. Okay. My pre I don't, I don't want to cut you off, but my question is you have entrepreneurial family, right? Like your parents are entrepreneurs. Yeah. They started it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, you just saw the transition here. Okay, Frank was 18 when he realized, wait a minute, I could do, I could do this. I could have my own business, I could do this. And I was 35, I was 35 when I realized that. So congratulations for that, Frank. I just wanna put that out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and then, and so then it goes like, well, you know what? I, I, I worked with these carpet guys for about two weeks. I learned the entire carpet uh, method, the, the whole process. I'm like, all right, I, I got what I needed. I, I could care less if you pay me because I know I'm going to make my money back doing my own contracts. I went ahead and called my uncle because he had a property that was getting ready to, you know, get carpeted. And I said, you know, uncle, this, that. Um, do you need your carpets, uh, you know, start of, do you, do you need your apartments to start with carpets? I can do them for you for a good price. And he was like, are you sure you know how to do it? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know how to do it. Like, honestly, I didn't know how to do like the steps and all that stuff. And I was like, yes, I can guarantee you I know how to do it. <laughs> so he said, okay, I'm going to pay you such and such for you to install carpets in his entire house. And <clears throat> once I got the deal, I said, holy crap. I don't have the tools. I don't have the van. I don't even know how to do carpets on the steps. But like you said, fake it till you make it. You know, I knew like more than half of the 
uh, process. So I went ahead, went to Home Depot and I bought all my tools for the very first time. And I spent a few hundred dollars on that. And I called my coworker at the carpet place and I ha asked them, hey, can you bring your van and can you help me install carpet in this house? And he taught me how to do carpets on the steps and all these things that I was missing. And you paid him. And I paid him and yes, I paid my, for my tools. And that weekend we completed the entire apartment building and I got paid more on that weekend than I would have gotten paid in like the two weeks that I would have worked for my carpet guys, you know? So once I got that money, I was like, holy crap, like this is, this is going somewhere. This can definitely lead me somewhere. And, and I just made the connection. I was like, I'm not going to work for somebody else no more. I'm just going to keep learning these skills and I'm going to get my own contracts. I want to get paid by the client directly, not through some middleman boss. And not to say that, not to talk down on jobs or anything. Um, I think it's very important, like, you know, like to use it as a stepping stone for you to eventually mm -hmm. get paid directly by the client. Yes. I'm going to start your own endeavors. Um, but I think that it's important to, to, to hold that, um, that thought, like, you know, that, like that, that light bulb moment where we went like, oh, I could definitely do this. I could definitely do this myself. Yeah, that's a great point, Frank. It is a stepping stone, but a lot of us don't ever step over the stone because here's why. Um, a lot of people are not, they don't have people in their lives that are working for themselves. I was never to, exposed to entrepreneurship as a kid, okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody in my family worked for somebody, mm -hmm. everyone. And that's just what you did. If you didn't work for somebody, you were unemployed or homeless or whatever, right? Like, that's just what you did. You, you graduated school, you went to get a job. And so, you know, having people like you, having friends that um, are having their own business, and if you don't have anybody that does their own thing, go on YouTube and start to have digital mentors, you know, mentors that are doing their own thing, because that's how I got inspired. Yeah. I would have been working for somebody else my entire life, if not for YouTube. You know, people yeah. like Andy Frisella, people like, um, you know, Gary Vee, for sure, in the beginning, Grant Cardone, um, people like... Take some um, note, guys, because these are, these are good names. Like, I listen to Gary Vee, Grant Cardone. Yep. And Jocko. I love Jocko. He has great advice. Um, I love also David Goggins, of course, and he is doing his own business, so he has great advice, too, because every single thing that successful people say, it's, it's advice for your own business, right? Whether it's fitness or relationships or business, it's all the same. You need discipline. You need to start before you're ready. You need to push yourself. You need to work harder than anybody else that you know. Uh, you know, things like that. And then the whole resourcefulness that you had at 18, that's very rare, and I wish I had it, but I just didn't know anything about that. I didn't know that, wow, I'm going to work for 10 years for someone and make them a lot of money and just get barely anything for myself. I can only imagine if I, if I knew to work for myself, you know, 10, 20 years ago where I could be now, but never too late. Yeah, ever. definitely. I was going to say. Ever. Yeah. Louise Hay, you know Louise Hay, right, Frank? No. So Louise Hay started her business in her 60s. She's like, um, no. <laughs> she, yeah, she wrote books and she started in her 60s. And she's like a, um, you know, healer, um, author. She started Hay House Publishing Company. And um, yeah, it's never too late. And um, for sure, I will never work for anyone else ever unless I have to, you know. And every day I, I wake up and I say, I don't want to work at Walmart. So let's go. That's my, that's my favorite yeah. thing to say. Because and not to, not to play victim game to anything. Like, you know, if, if, if I go to the Asian markets and I see durian and that's $5 a pound and I'm like, oh shit, like why is durian so expensive? Like, uh, like why are these guys so greedy? Like, oh, why don't they just let regular people afford durian? No, I'm not playing victim game. I'm gonna go ahead and work my butt off and do what I need to do to accumulate the money, the finances to afford durian. If I want the fancy organic grapes or the fancy organic blueberries, I'm going and I know they cost more. That to me is a motivation to make more that money. That means you have to make more. Great point, yeah. Frank. If you are a victim, if you have a victim's mentality, you will never, you will never achieve your goals and you will never, ever become successful. Victims cannot achieve their goals because it's just the state of uh, mind is saying, 
uh, it's not fair. I don't, you know, you're cutting yourself off from thinking resourceful when you're thinking about being a victim. So please, complaining, I, I heard Gary Vee say this once. He said, successful people don't complain. Complaining is for, I think he said for losers or for poor people, something like that. And, and like really you like just it. take responsibility for everything, you know, even, even if things go bad. You take, you take personal responsibility. It's, it's your fault if things go bad. So how old are you now, Frank? I'm 24 years. So you have been an entrepreneur from 18 to 24, yeah? From 19 to 24, 19. yeah, I'd say, yeah. Wow, wow. What is the best advice? I don't want to take your job from you, but what is the best advice you would give people that don't have, that, that want to have their own business and want to start their own thing, but they just don't know where to start? Definitely. What's up, Chris McGuire? Hey, thanks for that message. Um, for those of you, for those who want to start but don't know where to start, yeah, I'd say so. If you have some money to invest, even if that's just a you know a thousand, five hundred dollars, invest that into yourself. Learn a new skill. Uh, take advantage of all the free resources that are out there on YouTube, on on Spotify, on podcasts, on, on free eBooks. There are people who are selling eBooks for thirty bucks and have and, 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 uh, like a bunch of value that you or yourself would need. Look up hashtags that interest you, uh, things that interest you. Look up these hashtags and find these Instagrammers and find their eBooks, and you can buy an eBook from them for just thirty bucks. With thirty bucks, there you go. Now you're investing in yourself. Take uh, advantage of all the free resources on YouTube. Um, really, you just want to invest in yourself and get clarity of mind of what it is you want to pursue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great advice. Great advice. You know what? That's because you're resourceful. You can tell Frank is going to be successful because he's resourceful. He's taking advantage of the free information that's out there. And uh, I'm really like proud to know you, Frank, because <laughs> I don't know many, really, I don't know many entrepreneurs. I don't know many resourceful people, you know, so. We need to have more entrepreneurs in the fruitarian community. Like I, I want to help like, you know, you know, you and I both are promoting that right now. And I think it's like, you know, we said it's important to have people that are both help abundance in, in health and wealth, you know, and, and you know, one thing that I, that I caught people saying is health is wealth. And I, I get it, health is wealth. But a lot of people that say health is wealth don't have any physical wealth. And so they try and make themselves feel better by saying health is wealth. Oh, so I have health, that means I have wealth. No, if you have health, you have health. If you have wealth, you have wealth. Like physical, financial, abundance, wealth. Like yeah. imagine, if, imagine if there was like tons and tons of fruitarian millionaires. How powerful would that imagine be? Imagine how many organic farms there would be. Imagine how better this, this world would be. That's so true. I totally agree. Um, listen, everybody here, everybody watching, everybody that is a good person wants to help people, right? Okay, and some Daily great advice that I once heard. Daily should run the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, some great advice that I once heard was you can't help poor people by being poor, okay? And I personally know that I want to help people that don't have resources like me. I want to help kids. One of my dreams is to be able to send a box of exotic fruit to someone in an inner city who could never ever afford it or even imagine what exotic fruit is. Nice. Because I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, in really bad neighborhoods, and I never heard of this stuff before. I never heard of durian, jackfruit, star fruit. Yeah, is what are these things? Yeah. I don't know these things. And if I had known about these things, you know what? I could have been healthier. I could have gotten off processed food and junk food and fast food. And the reason why it's so important to be healthy, okay, on your way to success, okay, and I'm interested on your opinion on this too, Frank, but I think the reason is because the way you feel is the most important thing. Oh, my light just shut off. <laughs> the way you feel is the most important thing. So if you're a billionaire and you're um, sick, who cares? Who cares? If you feel like shit every day, then it doesn't even matter. Doesn't matter all that money. Sorry, I'm just gonna put my life back on. For sure, for sure. Yeah, like so what was, do you, um, there yeah. was that saying, you know, like imagine that there's this king in his throne right now and her queen is feeding her grapes and, and he has a whole palace and everything behind him. But every time he chews on that grape and swallows, he has this insane pain in his throat. And it's just like this, you know, horrible pain in his throat every time he swallows that grape. He could care less about the palace, the throne, 
always focusing is on that pain in his throat because I don't know, I mean, he's got congested throat, dry throat, he's dehydrated or whatever. So it's like, that's how important it is to feel good. I heard Jesse Itzler tell that story. Did you hear him say that one? I think it was like Gary Vee or something. Okay, or maybe. so Jesse Itzler said that story. And Jesse Itzler, he follows me. So holler if he comes in the live. <laughs> he is a billionaire who knows the value of health, okay? Because uh, money cannot help you if you ruin your health completely, right? It can, it can make you comfortable, it can buy you things. But if you haven't put in the time, if you haven't eliminated the bad food, you are not gonna be happy with all that money. There's no point. And that's such a great story that you said. Uh, wait, we got some good comments. Hold on, I don't wanna, I don't wanna- Yeah, ignore yeah guys, we're not ignoring you. We're gonna go back to those comments. Okay, okay. We'll go back to them. Oh, we can, we can, as we, as, as we, as you, as we please. I mean. Um, all relationships are an extension of the relationship with yourself. Yes, you treat others the way you treat yourself. That is such a good point, Jalen. Yeah, great point. The most common denominator in your life. Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, such a good point. If you're having a shitty life right now, if you have all these shitty people in your life and you're not making money and you can't do, you know, all nothing's working, the common denominator is you. So mm. look at yourself, please, because nobody's doing anything to you. You are doing it to you. You know that meme where you take off the mask and it's you? That's, that's what's going on. And, and if you want to start a business and you say you have no resources, where do I start? You've got your two hands. You've got your mind. You've got that with that alone, you can do so much. You yourself are your, are your best resource. Like imagine if, imagine if you had Jeanette on your team, like two of you, you know, so that, that kind of puts some emphasis yeah. on how valuable, like how much value you bring. Yeah. Like if I had two Franks running the house flipping business, holy crap, we'd get so much done. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could find another Jeanette. I just hired an assistant. You're it right there. <laughs> <laughs> I just hired an assistant, Frank. And I got to nice. tell you, I'm trying to turn her into a Jeanette. It's not easy, man. It's not easy. No um, one's going to work harder on your business than you. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious about that. I'll interview you for my channel and ask you all the questions I have for you about that because that's not easy. Um, so yeah, that, and then I just want to say, Grant had a comment, Rotarians should be allowed to travel, not vaccinated. Well, guess what? Guess what, guys? If you have your own private jet, you can travel, not vaccinated, okay? Oh, so, really? That, is that an actual thing? I'm going to say it is. So basically, you need money to live in this new world, okay? If you want to live the way you want to live, you got to have a lot of fucking money. And yeah. that's why I'm working as hard as possible every single day because we all know that if, money, if you don't have money, you don't have power, okay? And you are going to be subjected to all this bullshit, the vaccines, the radiation, the whatever is happening, you know, the food that isn't organic. You can't afford the good food if you don't have money. Uh, you can't buy your own farm. You can't start your own community. You need money. And uh, yeah, that reminds me of, um, I have a friend. He's trying to buy an island, okay? <laughs> you know about that? I heard about, I heard about some island, island shopping. Oh yeah. Fruitarian paradise. Yes. And I support that shit. And guess what? It's $6 million, but- <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Yeah, that's not that's not impossible. Six million dollars. Definitely, wow. like that. That's that's dream life. Like I want to aim for something like that. Like you know, to to have exciting goals and like things like buying a freaking island and turn that into a fruit orchard, a, a garden of Eden. You know, like oh, like that's wanna, what you need money for. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The garden of Eden's now. You can money can buy you a garden of Eden. Like that's how powerful money. Is. With money, I can buy a fruit tree. Fruit trees bring life. I can buy life essentially with money. With yeah. God. And uh, I just want to say about the money thing is that uh, a lot of us are coming from, we, we don't have our own thoughts on money. We have our parents' thoughts on money or society's thoughts on money. That, those are not our opinions. Okay. So what I want you people to do is I want you to take a piece of paper and write the word money on it and circle it and write down everything you feel about money. Okay. And you're going to start to see how negative or positive your view on money is. If you have, if you think money is for, you know, evil people, you think money is, um, you know, Illuminati based, you think money is whatever, right? 
then that's a problem. You're not going to get that into your life because you don't want evil. You don't want to support that in your life. So you're going to have to change your aspect of money. You're going to have to say, you know what? Money is actually for the good, to do good, to help other people, to buy islands for people, to buy, you know, to, to help other people out so you can see a homeless person and give him a $100 bill. You know, I did that once because I used to make a lot of money uh, when I was working for someone else. I made some good money and I used to give homeless people $100 bills. And there was no better feeling on earth, no mm. better feeling. And I just can only imagine if I worked for myself, how m much money I could have given, yeah. people, you know? And if you are making a lot of money, that is because you are of higher value to people. So you, yeah. you need to believe, you need to have with every little bit of your mind, know that I'm, I'm gonna, I, your mindset around money needs to be like so, so positive for you to attract it. like. I have to be a millionaire. I have to be a multi-millionaire because I need to help these people. These people can learn so much value from me. They, they can, I can, I, I want to touch people's lives. I want to have my outreach grow to such a level. And by doing so, I have to, you know, and a result, like being me, me being a multi-millionaire will, will come as a result. So like with all this money being accumulated, I see myself like starting vegetarian communities, buying pieces of land, building these shelters from scratch, building the community from scratch, or, you know, even starting schools or re restoring my neighborhood and building, you know, different, you know, improving the recreation parks and centers over there. Like there's so much you can do with this. Um, and it's not feeding it into this Babylon system where we're just, you know, buying uh, the exotic cars or the fancy shoes. Like I, I personally am not in, in, you know, interested in all that at all. That's why it's important for health conscious people to, be more aware, you know, to, to obtain financial abundance because yeah. we don't just mindlessly pump it into, you know, Babylon system, you know, that whole Babylon stuff. Yeah. If anything, we should be more motivated than any, anyone else on earth because we don't want the money to go to sweatshops and to, you know, killing pe animals and, you know, all these horrible things that happen when people support, you know, animal cruelty and, and buy these products, leather and, and, dead animal body parts and things like that, right? So you got to change your vision of money because the amount of good that you can do if you are a millionaire or billionaire is incredible. And I know you want to do that. You know, you're only given one life, so you've got to go for it now. And it's very short. Our life is very short, okay, right. guys? So whatever you want to do, just write a list of all the things that you love and the ways you can help people, and that's your business, okay? That's your business right there. You get paid um, for the value you bring, whether that's a, a product or a service. The more of value you are, the higher your payments are. So yes, yes, yes. And how do you become more valuable, Frank? Yeah, you you whatever that whatever that field of interest is to you, how can you be of value if let's say right now I'm doing credit repair and that's something that I'm doing. I I can charge people five hundred, maybe three, five uh, let's say around five hundred dollars, but but I remove so much debt from their credit report. I can remove thousands of dollars of debt from their credit report and I only charge them $500. So why wouldn't they you know, buy that for me? I am being a value to you. I'm giving you such a deal. Um, being a value, you just help one another. Really, that's what it is, helping another help themselves. Yeah, I heard some good advice once that somebody said um, from like a video or a podcast, and they said, if you want to make more money, you have to provide so much value for people that they feel like they're getting a good deal working with you. Like you're <laughs> stupid for giving them this deal. They're getting more value than they're paying. And, you know, and I speaking never of deals, um, just a, a little bit, um, I am going to offer a deal to everyone who sticks at the end of this video on oh. some LLCs and credit repair. So if you stick to the end of this video, I'll offer a big, big discount on how you can get started on your business through an LLC and through some credit repair, et cetera. So make sure you stick to the end. I love it. Also, before we, sorry, Grant said a comment twice, so I want to make sure and address it. Does hey, Mr. Vegan, the businesswoman, aspire to become Mrs. Fit Vegan or a Mama Fit Vegan? Okay, great question, Grant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is no, because I know my... I know why I was born. I just know it. I have my vision for my life and I know that being a parent, unfortunately, it was not part of my, it's not part of my destiny. I know that I was born to inspire people to go vegan. I was born to run my own 
VR vegan restaurant. I was born to have all these different things in motion. And I believe if you're a parent, you really need to, that needs to be your focus. That's my belief. And I just personally don't, I can't focus on too many things, right? I can't be a full parent and a full business owner. So my babies are my business, sis, that I will have uh, starting with the fruit business. And of course I have my online business. I'm going to have a restaurant one day. So that takes a lot, takes a lot of time. Good question, Grant. And uh, one more from him, having money or wealth can be empowering, but I think it means nothing if you don't value simplicity. Yeah. No, the best things in life are free. We know that, right? And at the Yeah, end of I, life, I can agree with that as well. Yeah, the best the things best in life are the yeah. sweet, simple Grant joys. Is, Grant is right. You're totally right. But I think it's important to understand what Frank is, Frank's point, which is we need the money to go for things that we want to create in the future. If we don't have the money, evil people do, okay? People that are hurting animals, people that are operating sweatshops, okay? People that are destroying the, the, the environment, the ocean. Um, we need to take the money away from those kind of people, okay? Because we want to create paradise on earth and we can, and it takes money for sure. And Ina is one of my friends. It's all after driving with me in the car with two toddlers and one infant. <laughs> Basically, I was in a car with Ina and I was like, actually, you know what? I'm not having kids no more. Because she does. <laughs> oh, kids yeah. under the age of four. Oh, they're so cute. Fruitarian, by the way. She's fruitarian. Her kids are vegan since birth. And she was a fruitarian while pregnant. And she's amazing. Wow. And, um, yeah. Ina, fruit okay, witch, everybody follow up? her. She's dope. She's dope. Okay. So, where yeah. are we? And, and even with the kids part, you know, I want to have a lot of kids one day. And that takes money as well, you know, to, to be, uh, to be the provider. So, uh, you know, it's important to, you know, have a sense of vision for the future and know the things that you want and be realistic in the amount of numbers in terms of numbers, like how much is et cetera going to cost. Yeah. I think it's really, this is my personal opinion, right? So guys don't get upset. I think it's really fucked up to have kids. If you don't have financial freedom, if you do not have your finances together, I don't believe you should have kids. And that's my opinion. Why? Because I'm glad you asked. Because I grew up poor. I mm -hmm. grew up in foster care. I grew up really poor. And my family, my parents, they didn't have money. They shouldn't have been having kids, right? That's my opinion. Uh, because I don't think it's right to put such a burden on children. You know, mm -hmm. they deserve the best. They deserve to be healthy from day one and having organic food to eat and, and living, you know, in a place where, that's safe and um breathing good air and you know so do you, that's do you think that has to do why we're so driven to like get ahead in life because i too came from you know like a pretty i wouldn't say super poor poor but you know my family was first immig first immigrated to the states yeah. uh they first started their businesses you know we lived in a very tiny apartment with like three siblings at one point wow uh i think that it's such a blessing to grow up poor i think it's such mm -hmm. a blessing because I know a lot of rich people that are miserable and they don't have any, they don't know how to take something and make, take nothing and, and make it into something. They are not resourceful. They don't know, they don't have drive and the confidence and the, the vision to, to work hard because they've never had to do it, right? So I personally really value my childhood. I wouldn't wish it on anyone and I wouldn't give that to anyone, you know? Like I wouldn't wanna, raise a kid the way I was raised. But uh, I am very grateful, very, very grateful because I'm extremely resourceful. And I know, I know if I work really hard, I can succeed. I know this. I know that's the key. Mm. And I know it's the key to happiness too, right? I don't know if everybody here knows that, but the key to happiness is working hard for something you love. Mm. Working hard for something you don't care about? No, you're not gonna be happy. But working hard and feeling accomplished is the key to you being happy, whether you make a lot of money or not. That's the key to happiness. And, and what is that? That's fruition. The key to happiness is fruition. Like when you fruit work for something ition. so hard. Fruit ition. Yes. Yeah. Like the, the, the fruits of your labor, you know, fruits are the last thing to produce on a tree. And so is our, so are results in a business. So are, so is money. And so is, you know, like value. So it's like, I, I'm, you know, really, you know, zoned in on, on all that and like trying to, uh, you know, how, comparing fruition and success in the material world because 
fruition is a sign of success on a tree. When I see fruit on a tree, that tree succeeded. Um, enriching flavors. She had a, a good comment. So she said she's a first time mom and she's trying to sell her products and it's been really hard. Okay. So first of all, everybody go follow her right now and then come back to our live. Okay. Enriching flavors. Um, everybody go follow her and support her. We need to support small businesses the way we support celebrities. Okay. Because right. celebrities, they don't need our money and they have enough followers, right? We need to shop small businesses. And that is something I'm really proud of now. I run a small business and I buy my stuff from farmers that are very small, very small farms. And I support small businesses and I eat all my food. Almost everything comes from small farms now. And that makes me really happy because I don't want to be supporting Amazon. No offense, you know? I don't want to be supporting these big conglomerates that I don't even know what they're doing with their money. And I know the people that I support, they're vegan, they're conscious, they're growing produce, you know, to help people and they're doing good with my money. So please don't give up enriching flavors. Um, basically, yeah. it's gonna be really, really hard, okay? If you heard my story, if you didn't hear it, go to the live when we're done. It is going to be extremely hard. And the difference between successful people and unsuccessful people are that successful people never quit even when it's hard, okay? There's a reason why there's a 1% and there's a 99% because the 1% have done shit that the 99% won't. 99% of people will quit, 99%. It is so hard to be an entrepreneur, but if you can stick with it, if you can stay with it no matter what, even if you're not making any money, even if you think this is like, it puts you in debt and you think you're stupid and nobody supports you and you're not getting anywhere. If you stick with it, that you will become the 1%, but you have to stick with it and you're gonna wanna quit and you're gonna wanna, you just throw it in and just get a job because jobs are easy and safe, but you'll never fulfill your destiny working at a job, okay? Yeah, and a big thing with that is goal setting. Set yourself goals. And another big thing with that is set yourself deadlines. Deadlines is important. You can say you wanna lose weight, but if you never gave yourself a deadline and you never said how much weight you want to lose, then, you know, like you're not going to hold yourself accountable for re reaching anything realistic. So give yourself a deadline and be specific with the things that you want to achieve as well and hold yourself damn accountable for it. And if you don't have, and if you need extra help, get in some, you know, get involved with accountability partners, get in a call every week where you can, you know, yeah. Get on a call <laughs> with me. That. <laughs> Get on a call with me or Frank. I'm an accountability coach, and I always tell my clients, hard now, easy future. Easy now, hard future, okay? So mm. everybody that's having an easy time now working their jobs and getting their paycheck, they're going to have a hard future because when their company goes out of business or when they don't want to get the vaccine, they're screwed. Enriching flavors, I want you to realize you're doing something very hard, and you're going to have an easier future if you just stick with it. And I know you can do it. Trust me. Listen to the, um, listen, there's a lot of podcasts that I recommend, but I would listen to the Real AF podcast. Go back to his back catalog. When he first started, Andy Frisella, he gave such good business advice. It was ridiculous. And I learned so much from him. And he helped me understand that all I need is one. All I need is one customer. And that's a business. Mm. And you just treat that one customer like they are your world. You go above and beyond. And they, what happens is they refer, they refer. Yeah, people will see that. Else. People will yeah. see the genuine passion that you have. Just how, you know, you were approached by some random stranger to start a business. People can see that. Yeah, I've been approached since by a lot of people. And now I'm understanding that I actually don't need to partner with anyone. Mm. Like I, I can hire assistants, I can hire employees, but I don't want to partner hey, with Christina. anyone because I don't need to. Now I realize it. So yeah. <laughs> Um, so I, I do want to offer this deal now because I feel like we're, you know, a, a quite a few minutes in. For those of you who have or are looking for ways to get funded into your business, whether that's a juice bar, whether you're, you know, trying to sell some kind of vegan product or whatever, and you need the money, you know, that's usually a big thing that prevents us, you know, from actually pursuing our goals um, is the funding aspect. So what I've been learning recently is the whole credit game and the whole credit world. I just recently started getting my credit cards with Jeanette. She held me accountable to whole get these credit cards actually like 
was it December of last year, just not too long ago? And look at that. And now Frank invited me onto his channel. You see the, the exchange, you know, he didn't have to invite me, and, but I changed his life so much. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. We all just help one another, and it, and it, and the exchange of give and receive and the value just is always constantly moving. So, um, credit can definitely help you get funded, right? So it's like, all right, you can if you have a good personal credit. Some of us don't really have good personal credit scores. You know, usually we make these bad decisions. I just want you to know that with credit, credit is such an amazing tool for you to get funded and for you to get these, this, this, this business idea moving. So I do offer credit repair services. What you can do is you can DM me right now. I'm only gonna offer a deal to people who joined this live. So I'm gonna actually type in something. So if you DM me deals, I will offer you a, a discount on some credit repair services. Um, so what I like to do is I open LLCs for people. And with this LLC, you now are registered with the IRS as a business owner, right? Meaning with you being a business owner, you can walk into any bank and and open a business bank account. You open a business bank account for about two, maybe three months, depending on what the, uh, you know, what, what they recommend. Um, and what you do is you start building a, a positive and healthy relationship with these banks. You build that positive and healthy relationship with the bank for two to three months, maybe six months, some recommend. And now you can, you are able to qualify for business funding. If you have a good credit score and you have a good relationship with a bank, these banks give you $5,000, $10,000, $15,000 per every LLC that you have. So I think that's very important um, to get this, to get, to, to act on this because, you know, the, the government, the, the banks are handing out money. And that's the kind of money that we want to invest is other people's money. When we invest our own dollar bills, guess what happens? We run out. We only have limited. But when you're using the bank's money, now things are becoming like more abundant. Now we can, and you know, they're only charging 3% interest. If you pay your credit cards on time, uh, interest is actually at zero. So just something to keep in mind for those who are ready to start, you know, investing and getting funding into their business, you can go ahead and DM me deals. And I'll offer you a discount on LOC formations and credit repair services and only exclusive to the people on this slide. Amazing. Thank you for that, Frank. That's amazing. That's What's up, West? He left a, he left a bunch of comments here. Yes, sir. <laughs> Why do some people say credit and debt is bad? It's just the way we've been, we've been taught about debt. You know, I thought debt was bad growing up as well. That's why I never got into building my credit score. Uh, th there's a difference between good debt and bad debt. And yes, good debt exists. You know, if you are borrowing money to buy, um, let's say a vending machine, and with that vending machine, it costs you one grand, you can go ahead and put it in a store and have it, you know, pretty much generating money on a monthly basis, on a week, on a daily basis, actually. And you're making your money back more than the interest that you got to pay off, then that's good debt. If I borrow money to buy a property and, and borrow money to fix it up, and then the rent's going to, you know, take care of all the debts, and then I'm going to, you know, stick with the profits, that's, real, that's good debt right there. But if I'm borrowing money to buy the newest Jordans or the newest, you know, Air Max and something that degrades in value, then that's when people start, that's when you start thinking of bad debt. So you want to borrow money to buy things that appreciate in value, not depreciate. Definitely, definitely. You got a lot of engagement on this. I'm reading over some of the comments. Uh, yes. Oh, you know, Olivia, Olivia actually worked with Jesse, Jesse Isler. Yes, I saw. Yeah. Amazing. Incredible. Enriching Flavors is asking how, so if you have bad credit, how you gain credit. So I think Frank touched on that. Um, getting a bank account, you know, um, is really important and getting the small credit card that they offer. They often offer very small, you know, with very, very small amounts on it, maybe 200 or $300. And you have to often pay for the credit card. So you have to give them a hundred dollars or something like that. To That's get if it's the a secured credit card. credit card. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's a secure credit card, right? That's the best way if you have very bad credit or no credit at all. That's a great way. And then always pay the full amount. Never pay the minimum. Pay the full amount uh, that uh, every single month. And make sure you pay on time. And use the credit card, too. Because don't just get a credit card and don't use it. They can't see if you're trustworthy or not. And then eventually they will raise your limit. And, um, you know, I just, I just think that it's really important to build your credit because your future is going to depend on your credit, right? You're not going to be able to take out those loans, like Frank said. And, and you can't rent an apartment nowadays. You can't rent a car out, you know, and there's so many benefits. So right now I'm flipping a house, right? And every purchase that I make is either from my credit card or from my business, uh, business debit card. So if I'm not getting credit reward points or building my credit, I'm using my debit, my business debit card, and I'm building a relationship with these banks. And and to fix your credit, what I do is, I, so my my services is I offer um, I offer removal of inquiries and removal of collections and student loans and any account that's closed that has debt. So these accounts that that you owe debt in, I remove them completely off your report. Meaning once they're removed, your credit score goes up. And as your credit score goes up, I then go ahead and we guide you on what credit cards are best suited for you so you can start building your credit. Yeah, very valuable, especially if you're a business owner. Uh, you definitely want to get your credit right. Definitely. Uh, thank you for that, Frank. Yeah, I have good credit because I never, I always did cash for every single thing. I never, I was too scared. You know, I, was I, a, I was a big cash guy as well. Just like wanting to buy everything in cash. Like I never was into credit or all that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because my family, my mom had a lot of debt. You know, my family had a lot of debt. So I never wanted to be like that. So um, I always paid for everything in cash. But it's not, it's not a great way to build your credit, right? I just got lucky. I have good credit. But if you pay for everything in cash, you don't have a, a history of credit. So you're going to have to build that for sure. Um, I need to see who I need to pay back. Yeah, no, talk to Frank. E DM Frank Enriching Flavors, and he will help you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, what, what you do is um, I'll, I'll ask for your Credit Karma login info, and I'll, and I'll look at your uh, uh, credit profile, and we'll, we'll you know, go on a, on a call, and we'll assess your credit report for free, and I'll tell you what the things are that you need, and, and we'll go from there. So um, definitely just DM me deals. That way I know that you showed up to this live, and we can work out a discount for you. There you go. And if you're going to spend this money regardless in cash, why not just do it through a credit card? You know, you're getting paid to make these purchases anyways in cashback reward points. You're getting benefited by building your credit score. But for credit score that, I mean, oh man, they say like an 800 credit score is now, it's just as valuable if not more than like a million bucks. Because with that, you can leverage your credit score and to buy million dollar properties or million dollar you know, loans and stuff. There so, you go. You don't always have to have the, the cash. I'm building my credit score buying these guys right now. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. And uh, good investment in your DNA and your future. There you go, right there. So, mm. And then speaking of fruit, um, you, if people want to buy fruit and they want to buy exotic fruits, how can they get that? Good question. Well, first of all, if you're in the South Florida area, you can DM me. I will provide you fruit. We are not shipping at this time. We were shipping, but not at this time because it's quite a different business, shipping and providing fruits locally. So I'm still working on the shipping part. But so we're only providing local South Florida people with fruit uh, at the moment. And so you can DM me or you can go to fruitislife.store. Um, if you don't live in South Florida, but you still want to get fruity, uh, I have a few things for you. One, I have a free recipe book. So you can DM me uh, and I will send that to you. Or you can go to 100freerecipes.com. Mm. So simple. 100freerecipes.com. Can you write and, that in the um, chat? Thank you. You want me to write it? or you want Yeah, to probably. It? But you can write it and I can pin it. Thank you so much. So 100freerecipes.com is all of the recipes that I love to eat because throughout the years, I have, I personally, I think I spelled it right. Okay. I personally 
have struggled with making these raw vegan gourmet things. I can't do it. I don't have the, sorry, just had a phone call. Okay, so I don't have the patience or the time to do raw vegan gourmet. So what I did was I came up with a hundred of my favorite recipes that are five ingredients or less, no dehydrator, no oil required, uh, really, really simple, clean, but delicious recipes. And uh, DM me, I'll send you that. And the other thing is that I have a tropical fruit guide. So if you're someone who doesn't live in South Florida and you can't get fruit from me, you can still get tropical fruit from your local, probably usually your local Asian market, okay? So DM me and I will send you that book. It's like $11 and it is how to find tropical exotic fruit wherever you live. And I teach you how to eat it, how to know when it's ripe, how to, um, recipes, all that stuff. So, yes. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, because people ask me all the time, like, Frank, how do I, how do you get this tropical? How do you get dairy? How do you get, it's like, hey, I can just tell them about your ebook now. So yes. is yes. it on 100freerecipes.com or is it, a, is it a different? It's, uh, just go, you can go to the, the link in my Instagram bio. You can find it. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. So. Well, I'll send them your link when they ask. Thank you so much. Yes. Totally, totally. Um, awesome. Yes, this was, this just, was good. Yeah, I want to say thank you so much to Frank. Um, and I just want to say thank you to everybody who's watching. And um, the I think we'll both say our last thoughts on money and um, fruit and making money and eating fruit. Okay, number one, you want to eat fr as much fruit as possible because that is our species-specific food. And that is what our DNA is made up of. And if you want to succeed in life, you're going to have to start taking care of yourself. Because when you take care of yourself, you feel better. You have more energy and the universe sees that the universe sees that oh this person is valuable they're taking really good care of themselves they're putting in really really good information because food is information into ourselves and everything is connected guys so when you eat things that come from the earth that are created by the creator you get more connected to the creator to the universe and the universe recognizes that and i just want to say as far as making money goes because that's the fruit aspect right the health as far as making money goes, the last thing I want to say is if you want to make more money, you've got to help more people. Mm. Okay. You yeah. want to make more money. You got to help more people because the amount of people you help is the amount of dollars in your bank account. Mm. When you start helping millions of people, you will be making millions of dollars. Yeah. And I yeah. know Frank that you are going to be doing that. So I appreciate you. Thank you for inviting me. And, um, Definitely. Yeah. Thanks for sharing all that. Yeah. Yeah. I very much agree with everything you said. The more people you help, the more money you make. That's and, and then the whole metaphysical aspect of eating fruit. Um, I think, yeah, I personally manifest more when I'm eating just fruit. 100%. Like, 100%. It just flows so much better. Like, crazy, everything I think I've about. experienced it. 100%. Yep. Yep. It must be the connection. It's the connection between the universe and the fruit and our DNA. And it's like we're, we're, you know, back in the day, they said that we had like psychic powers and we had mm. telepathy and things like that. <laughs> travel, we could time travel. It's because we were eating this kind of diet. So let's get back to those powers. Definitely. Right? So you guys can get one thing out of this, eat more fruit and make more money. Help Woo! more people. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. All right. I'm about to log back out. I got to eat this durian. I got to eat this watermelon. All right. Ciao. <laughs> Bye.